Welcome to my video on how to use the Casio Graphics Calculator to calculate the normal distribution. So, as always, it's really important to, to say that you shouldn't be just using a graphics calculator in the exam. You do need to show some working. But this is a great alternative to using the big scary table. So I'm going to show you how to use it today on my fun little emulator. Um, and we're going to just answer some very standard questions and then in the next video we'll actually look at an exam question. So let's get started. If you look in your manual for your calculator, which I'm sure you do all the time, it will tell you to do this through stat number two. There's an easier way, I think, which is to go through number one, which is the main maths menu. So I'm just going to press record and then my keystrokes will come up here. Now when you get onto the main maths menu, you will it will look like this and if you press options then it gives you a whole load of options and what we want is stat so we press F5 then we want dist for distribution and then we want norm because we're dealing with a normal distribution now the two things we're going to use are NCD and INVN now the INVN allows us to go backwards in the table, so it's the inverse normal. So we put in a probability, it tells us the z value that corresponds. The NCD gives us the probability, so that's going forwards in the table. So if I click norm CD, then it opens up a bracket, and the parameters that go in that bracket is what's in red down here. So if we imagine our lovely bell-shaped curve, if I want to find the probability between this value and this value, then I would put this in as being the lower value is this one, the upper value is that one, the standard deviation, and then the mean. So for example, if I want to do 198 to 207, then I just simply put in 198, comma, 207, then I put in the standard deviation, so we're working here with x being normally distributed with a mean of 200 and a variance of 25, so standard deviation of 5, and then a mean of 200. Close the bracket, although you don't really need to. Press execute, and that gives us the answer. So I know that the probability for this normal distribution of a value falling between 198 and 207 is 0.57466 blah blah blah. Now obviously if you did this in the table you'd have to do less than 207, then you'd have to do less than 198, but actually you'd have to do a 1 minus the positive value of that, it would take much much longer. Now if I wanted to do what seems like a more straightforward calculation, x less than 210, we know this will look something like this. Now to put it into the calculator you still need to give it a lower bound. So remembering that our lovely bell-shaped curve is actually infinite, we should really go from minus infinity up to 210. Now, there isn't an infinity button on the calculator. So instead, if we just go minus something big, 9999, up to 210. And again, standard deviation is 5, mean is 200. Then that gives us our value. And similarly, if we want to do it for 196, now obviously you can just use the arrow buttons and go up and just change 210. Oh, great, <laughs> lots of arrows here. Just change 210 for 196. So that can save a little bit of time, but to be honest, moving around is a bit annoying. So calculate that, and that gives us the probability of that. Obviously, if we wanted to do greater than, so say I want to do the probability of x being greater than 196, then we do the same thing, except our lower bound is now 196. And our upper bound, we just take to be something big and positive, so 9999. And again, 5 and 200. Now, the last bit, the inverse normal. So if I want to say, if x is less than a value a, and that probability is 0 0.875, then what is a? Then we use the inverse normal. So 
this is the same kind of setup instead of lower and upper obviously we just put in the probability so 0 0.875 and then the same thing the standard deviation and the mean and that gives us the value now obviously for all of these you've got to always be thinking does that make sense because if you put the wrong values into your calculator the calculator will just do what it's told and you'll get the wrong answer so for example for a probability of 0.875 we'd expect that to be above the mean so an answer of 205 seems realistic if we put the wrong thing in and we got an answer of 98 then we know that something had gone wrong so a quick recap so a quick recap from the start from the menu we choose one for the main menu we then go for options stat dist norm and then NCD for finding probability, inverse for finding a value. And the key thing is, these are the parameters that go in. So lower, then upper, and always standard deviation before the mean.